All right, let's see. This is the fastest external drive system that you will ever have seen connected to any Apple Silicon Mac. Those are some strong claims. And after I saw that, I just had to try it also. But instead of MacBook Pro, which I also tried it on, I'm gonna try it on the Mac Mini. This is the M4 Pro version, so it does have Thunderbolt 5 ports right here. All three of those are Thunderbolt 5 ports. Each one of these is a Thunderbolt 5 enclosure capable of 80 gigabit per second speeds. But wait a minute, how is that gonna make it faster? Won't it just go as fast as one of these? Let's plug it in and find out. I'm gonna do some file transfers as well as some LLM benchmarks. Now inside each one of these identical enclosures is the brand new, well, a few months old now, 9100 Pro by Samsung. This is the one terabyte NVMe SSD. So potentially we can get even faster if we go with the four terabytes or eight terabytes, but then at this point, that video is gonna be so expensive even the sponsor won't be able to cover it. Speaking of which, I bought all this stuff myself. So here's a message from the sponsor to help cover this. Hardware makes AI fly, but AI or benchmarks won't cover the basics. Even after decades, I still invest in fundamentals. Quick shout out to boot.dev. Easily the most engaging way I've learned backend web development. Think RPG meets coding, quests, XP, leaderboards, and built-in AI guidance so you actually finish. Practical projects and courses in Python, Go, and JavaScript that map to real backend work. APIs, auth, databases, testing, caching, everything that matters. You'll have access to a lively Discord, clean solutions, and job-focused curriculum instead of just lectures. The best part? You can browse the lessons free. A membership adds interactive coding, AI support, progress tracking, and the game layer. Binging tutorials is great for popcorn, but no gains. Boot.dev turns that time into reps that build production-ready services. Level up at the link below. Use my code for 25% off your first payment on boot.dev. See you in the quests. The 9100 Pro is capable of PCIe Gen 5 speeds, which means up to 14,800 read and 13,400 megabytes write speeds. That's per second. That's crazy, right? Now the internal drive of this little Mac mini is also no slouch. So if I run that, we're getting close to 6,000. Yeah, over 6,000, right? 5,000 on the read. So these are good speeds. This is, <laughs> this is gonna be plenty fast for most scenarios and probably what you should be doing anyway. If you didn't notice already, this video is a little crazy and we're doing some experiments that you probably should not be doing, but I wanna see how much juice I can squeeze out of these oranges, I mean, enclosures. Sometimes the videos on this channel are just for fun, you know? I tried it so you don't have to kind of things. By the way, the internal SSDs of MacBook Pros and Mac Minis all increase with speed the more memory you have, the more storage you have. And that's because there's more NAND chips involved and reading and writing, so you can do that more parallel. Now I'm using LM Studio here because it makes it really easy to manage stuff and to run a local server. LM Studio, if you're not familiar with that, it allows you to run large language models locally. So for example, here's GPT OSS 20 billion. I'm just gonna load it up like that and I'll be able to chat with it. Hey, boom. And there's the assistant. Now what happened there was that model, it's a very large model, over 11 gigabytes in size. It was read from the SSD, loaded up into memory, and now while it's loaded, it lives in memory. So if we take a look at that, there's 64 gigabytes of unified memory on this machine and 26 are being used right now. A lot of that is from LM Studio from having this model loaded. You can see the memory pressure right there went up when I loaded the model. If I eject the model or unloaded, in other words, you'll see that memory pressure go down. If I load a bigger model like this OpenAI GPT OSS 120 billion, it might not load at all. <laughs> let's see, it's 59 gigabytes. So let's load that up and see if it even loads here. You'll see the memory pressure going up. It's being read from the internal SSD right now and loaded gradually into memory. Come on, are you gonna do it or not? It loaded up but our memory pressure got a little bit orange there and we're using 53.9 gigabytes out of 64 right now. Can I talk to this? Hello. Look at that memory suffering. <laughs> yeah, it worked. 24 tokens per second. Amazing. What's the point of all this? Well, you might be running out of space on your hard drive because right now this machine has only 400 gigabytes available. With all these new models coming out, you're gonna have more and more space demands. And a solution like keeping it on an external drive might actually be the thing for you. In LM Studio, you can actually go in here under your models 
and change the model directory. Right now it's pointing to my LM Studio folder, models. But I can change that path to an external location if I want to, or some other location somewhere else on my NAS, for example. I've showed that on the channel before, actually. That's quite a bit slower because you're going over a slower network. Here, we've got really fast, directly connected speeds. But for now, let's take a look at what we can do with these drives. So first of all, I'm gonna go to something called Disk Utility on a Mac. And right now it's detecting these three uninitialized disks. I can erase one of them, format it, and let's do one of them right now. Boom, it's been erased, it's ready to go. There it is. It's an APFS volume, which is an Apple file system volume. So that means this will not work on Windows. You'll need to format it as something else for it to work on Windows. But if I go to my disk speed test and select the target drive and select that untitled drive, which is the external drive, I don't know which one it is of these, but it's one of those. Let's start the test. And look at that. That's as fast as the internal drive in this case. There is another tool that I prefer using, which gives us a little bit more detail. And it's called Amorphous Disk Mark. This one's available for Mac and Windows. So I'm gonna grab this one. And it has a little bit more of a breakdown between the different kinds of reads and writes. There's sequential for large files, and then there is random. These are more used for when you're compiling a code base, you're moving lots of little files around. So the random here are more representative of that. Let's take a look at sequential because that's kind of what Blackmagic disk speed measures. And this is the internal drive. So it's, a li it's showing a little bit lower, but pretty close. Let's select our external drive and try that one out. Whoa, <laughs> much faster. So the Blackmagic disk speed test sometimes even David Harry in his video mentioned that it's a little bit limiting to what it shows you. It's not gonna be as accurate as Amorphous here. And Amorphous is giving us a little bit of a better number here because it has the capacity to measure higher. So that's what we're gonna be using. Now, right now you can grab your models and put them on the external drive. Let's see if I can tell which one it is just by measuring the approximate temperature. I can't, they're all warm. By the way, these enclosures have little fans in them. They kick in whenever it senses that the temperature is getting too hot. And that's gonna be one of our limiting factors here is these things getting too hot because these little SSDs, the Gen 5 ones, get way hotter than Gen 4. So they need to be managed extensively. You'll see a lot of Gen 4 enclosures that are passively cooled. Gen 5s, most of them have to be actively cooled. Now. There is a trick here. How do we get all these drives to work together to get to that speed? Well, Disk Utility has a little thing called RAID Assistant. You can create striped, mirrored, or concatenated drives out of multiples. What Stripe does is RAID 0, basically, is it going to write little pieces of data to each one so that when it's writing and reading the data from the drives, it can use all the Thunderbolt lanes available, each one being 80 gigabit per second. So it can combine all of them and go really, really fast. But the problem here is that if you lose one of those, you're losing one third of the data and therefore all your data is corrupt. Mirrored is actually RAID 1 and that's safety. It's gonna basically mirror everything on each drive. If you want an extremely safe system, if you don't wanna lose anything, this is the way to go. But we don't, want, we don't care about that. We want speed. So here comes a little warning for you. I'm doing this not to show you a backup type of solution, but more of a quick loading type of solution specifically for large language models because these models it doesn't matter if I blow them away or not. It's just temporary storage of large files. So I don't care. If it gets lost, fine. I'll re-download it. But for now, it's fine if I keep these files here. So that's why I'm gonna pick Striped, RAID 0. Next, I'm gonna select the drives that I wanna include in that group. That's gonna be all three of them. I'm gonna select APFS, and I'm gonna give it a nice big chunk size. Let's go. Create. It's gonna erase everything on there and create a new RAID 0 array. Mounting disk, RAID created successfully, done. Now if we go to our finder, you'll see that we have the untitled drive there. It's seeing all three of these as one. Just wanna show you something real quick here, okay? This is gonna blow your mind if you haven't never seen this. Here is a, the 120 billion parameter model on disk. It is a 39 gigabyte file, so 40 gigabytes, okay? Now I'm gonna do this in real time. I'm gonna drop this over there. And one, two, three, drop. There it is, it's done. That was about, what, four or five seconds? 40 gigabytes in five seconds. 
<laughs> That's crazy. I think the UI took more time to render. If I do this on the terminal, it's gonna be even shorter. Let's take a look at our black magic disk speed. Now I said earlier that this is not gonna be super accurate. So let's see what it shows us. I'm gonna select the drive here, that untitled drive and go. Yeah, so it's showing us much faster than we've seen before. Holy cow, we're reaching 14,500 in read speed here and 8,230 in write speed. This is already way faster, even according to this meter here. But let's try amorphous and see what that shows us. So I'm gonna select untitled here and boom. <laughs> oh, I heard it. I heard it. I saw it hit 20,000. Wow. That is crazy. Look at these speeds, 19,900. We're talking about almost 20,000 here. What if I go to a four gigabyte chunk here? Let's see if that gets us to 20. Nope, that's a little bit slower. This is faster than Thunderbolt five speeds, but what's the advantage when it comes to large language models. Is there an advantage? Well, you already saw the file copy advantage. That's crazy, right? Let's go back to LM Studio. Actually, what I'm gonna do first is recreate the models folder here in our new RAID array. So I'm gonna call it models because I'm so creative. Let's do this one. Quen Coder 32 billion. Boom, drop it in there. <laughs> it's done. <laughs> We don't need, even need to do a jump cut there because it's so fast. Ah, here's one. Llama 3.3, 70 billion. I don't need to pick and choose little files. I'll just copy this whole folder with, uh, it's like 120 gigabytes in there. Let's see how long that takes. It's 117 gigabytes, less than a minute. About 10 seconds left. There we go, it's done. <laughs> Crazy. So those are the models I copied from my local cache. I can now go to LM Studio and change my model directory. Let's go to here, to the untitled folder. Look at those models, pull those models up, and now we'll be able to load those models directly from this array of disks. Let's try this um, Quencoder 32 billion. Load it up. Now it's being read from that array. Uh, wait, it's already done. <laughs> okay, that's fast. So here we are, we got the memory pressure, so it's clearly working. Hello? Yep, there's the model. So the next step was to write some code. Of course, I went to my favorite little AI agent. So of course, the next step was to actually script this out and automatically load up that model in LM Studio using LM Studio right here is the Python SDK they have right here. Here you specify the model you want to load, you give it a prompt, and this script basically measures how long it takes for each iteration. It does it 10 times. And then it also happens to get the tokens per second, because why not? We don't really need that for this test, but why not? Let's do it. Benchmark, boom. And there it goes. You can see in the background, it's loading. The model is generating um, and now it's going to be unloading the model and reloading the model, generating, and so on. We're on iteration two right now. Model loaded in 1.52 seconds. This is the 32 billion parameter model, which is 12.31 gigs on disk. Now these things are getting pretty warm. I should probably have a little space between them and the desk and maybe even blow a little fan that I brought here. But Let's see what happens right now without that. Wow, that actually finished. And by the looks of it, we are pretty consistent. So it's not like there was a big slowdown after a while. 1.53 seconds was the longest. 1.48 looks like was the shortest. And total time was 15.1 seconds. Total runtime, 87.77 do that again, but this time I'm gonna switch back to LM Studio to the internal or the local hard drive. This is just showing my folders, but I'm not seeing the hidden folders, which start with a period. So to do that, shift command period usually works, but in my case, I don't have a command key. Ah, it's one of those new keyboards. It's ceramic, but no command key. Let's switch to Mac. Maybe that'll do it. <laughs> There's always a solution. All right, here we go. Dot LM Studio dot model slash models open. There's all our models that are local now. Go back to our little server here and run this one more time. Boom. Seems to be working. Is the performance of the three RAID 0 drives 
faster and is it worth it the hassle of having to do that having to carry those things around this will probably only be worth it if it's significantly faster because the hassle otherwise is too much and also let's face it nobody should really be doing this because it's probably not super safe even if uh, it crashes once on you, it's gonna be annoying and a pain. And especially if you're running a long script that you've programmed to be able to load models and unload them because that's what we're simulating here. If you have some kind of pipeline where you're processing, I don't know, video frames or something like that. And you wanna try different models for different parts or if you have different agents working together, that's what this situation is covering here. It's not just for chatting, right? When you're chatting, you just load one model up you're chatting away and you're done. Here we're doing unloading and loading for agentic type of purposes. And we're done, huh? Well, that first one we can just throw out. 5.6 seconds, really? Yeah, we'll throw that one out. But 1.55 seems to be the longest load time. And 1.53 is the shortest. Total load time, 19.4 seconds. That's including that weird one in the beginning. And 86.36 runtime. Here's the first one, 87.77, but that's the total runtime. The total load time was 15 from the drives. Each iteration seems to be on average faster, 1.5 seconds. Average load time per iteration from the internal, 1.94 seconds. And you can extrapolate that to whatever length of time you need. So it does look like it is faster. Obviously, the drives are have a faster read time. Just wanted to test this out in this particular scenario because I haven't seen anybody do this. Would you do this? I don't know. It's, it's a weird case, right? Weird edge case, but it's an experiment. I thought we'd try it out. Let me know if you like these kinds of experiments. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.